Hello and welcome to the third and final beginner tutorial for Shader Sandwich. My name is Sean Butker and I'll be taking you through creating this really cool looking lava crack shader. So it's pretty nice looking as you can see, it's pretty clear I think, but nonetheless I'll go through some of the really cool features of it. First off I've got this interesting depth effect here without any additional geometry. If we turn on wireframe mode you can see it's just faking it within it. So that way you can apply this to really low poly models and make them look really cool. So that's a really nice feature. Along with this, it's also got this animated glow, which is actually glowing. If I turn off the lighting, you can see it does remain lit. Finally, it looks really good in lots of different lighting conditions. For example, daytime here. So all in all, it's a really nice looking shader, and it's pretty simple to make. Alright, well, let's actually get to it. So, let's open up Shader Sandwich. I'm going to go into Window, and then Shader Sandwich. And here we are, the Shader Sandwich interface. So unlike the last tutorial, we'll be starting completely from scratch this time, so let's go new shader, start from scratch. Finally, let's open up the previewing window just so we can see what we're doing, and make sure that real-time updates are turned on. You can find this setting within the previews, and then real-time preview updates, make sure it's on. Cool. Now, if you haven't seen any previous tutorials, I'd suggest taking a look at them first. I'm not going to be covering some very basic stuff here, so so if you can't follow along properly, then I'd suggest taking a look at those first. Alright, well, let's get started. So, first things first, we're going to add the lava crack texture. Don't worry, this texture comes with Shader Sandwich, so it's really easy to use. Click the plus button to add a new layer to the diffuse channel, and set its type to texture. Then, just like in the last tutorial, we'll add the exclamation mark input, yes. And finally, we can select a texture. So select this ash cracked texture. Alright, so you can see we've got this sort of nice ash cracked texture. Uh, it doesn't really look that interesting though, as is. So this is a really good example of having good art really can help sell an effect. Like, you could use this just by itself. However, having that extra shader stuff can really pull that effect through in a way that just good art couldn't. So let's go ahead and make this look better. First thing we're going to do is make the actual lava parts glow properly. As you can see, if I turn off the lighting, it just sort of, it, it's pretty bland, it doesn't glow. So let's make it glow. We're going to turn on the emission channel, just like we did last time as well, with our room light. So go into settings, scroll down to emission, and then turn it on. So now we'll have a new channel for emissions, so that's cool. So we're going to copy and paste the diffuse layer into the emission. So right click, copy, and then right click, paste. Alright, so you can see it's starting to look a little better, however, it's actually making the entire thing glow, the ash parts as well as the lava parts. But we can fix this. First, let's have a look at the actual texture we're using. So I'm going to open it up within Unity. Let's go into Assets, Shader Sandwich, Documentation, Tutorial Textures, Ash Cracked. Here we are. So you can see it's got the texture, but it also has an alpha channel. So we can toggle this button here to see just the alpha channel itself. You can see that the lava parts are black, while the ash parts are white. So we can use this alpha channel to just make the lava parts show through. So go into the emission layer, and then turn on use alpha. So when you turn on use alpha, you'll see it does kind of the exact opposite of what we want. It's made the lava parts not glow, and the ash parts glow. This is because, you've used, this is because use alpha makes the white parts show through, and the black parts invisible. So what we need to do is invert the alpha channel, and we can do this really easily. Scroll down to the bottom of the layer settings, and add the color invert effect. So you'll see that just inverts the color. However, there's this little A here next to the visibility icon. This affects whether or not it affects the alpha. If you turn it on, you can see it affects both the color and the alpha. Click it once more, and it will just affect the alpha. And now you can see that these bright parts show through because it's going, it's turning all the black parts into white and the white parts into black. And there we go, that's looking pretty good. So next we're going to make the glow move across slightly. This is a pretty simple thing to add. Add a new layer into the emission channel and set its type to noise. So you'll see it adds these sort of white splotches to it. Next we want to set the blend mode to multiply. And there we go, you can see it's darkened some parts and kept the other parts the same. So now we just need to make it move across the screen. We can do this really easily. Scroll down to the bottom and add the mapping offset effect. So this lets you offset the texture. For example, if you drag it slightly, you can see it move across. 
So let's add an input for it. Click on the blue gear and then click the plus button. This lets us scroll it across easier. However, we want it to animate automatically. We don't want to have to keyframe this or anything. So what we can do is we can go into a new panel called the inputs panel. So down where we've got back settings and input, click on inputs. Voila, this is a new panel. So this is where all our inputs vanish off to. So you can see the texture input has gone over here, as has our X offset one. So what we can do is we can animate this within here by setting a replacement value. Now you'll notice replacement is grayed out. This is because of the visible option. So the visible option uh, states whether or not this X offset will be visible within the material panel. However, if it's visible there, then you can set it manually. It can't be animated then. So what you have to do is turn off visible. Now we can set a replacement. Click on the replacement and select Time Basic Standard. And there we go, you can see it scroll across. Feel free to select a different time. There's all sorts of different ones, fast, very slow, slow. And take a look at a few of these other things as well. Just mess around a bit. Alright, well now let's add all those actual cracks into it. So if we have a look at this, you can see it looks kind of dull. There isn't that depth. And we can add that depth. Now there's a bunch of different ways we could do this. One such it would be just to model the actual depth itself in a 3D modeling program. However, this is very slow, it takes ages, and it also uses up tons and tons of polys. And having a high poly count is usually not a good idea, especially for something as simple as this. However, we can fake this effect within Shader Sandwich by using a different base setting. So go back into Layers, and then into the Settings. If we scroll down to the bottom, you'll see an effect called POM, or Fake Parallax, otherwise known as Parallax Occlusion Mapping. So this lets us create those bits of fake depth. So what we're going to do is turn it on. Now, you won't see any immediate change, because we have to tell it which parts are deeper than the others. We'll do that in a second, though. First off, I just want to go through what some of these settings are. First, we have the height. The height affects how deep the deepest parts are within the model. For this, I'm just going to set this to 0 0.13, because I know that it works nicely. If you want to adjust it later, I'd suggest just adding an input. Command you can click and drag it without any lag. Then we have the quality. The quality defines sort of how pixely it is. A low quality one can look rather bad, but the higher quality ones can be slower. For this, I'm going to set it to a quality of about 20. Alright, well, let's actually make it do something now. Let's go back into our layers, and you'll see we have a new area called height. So the height defines which parts of the shader are higher than the others. But anyway, so what we're going to do is we can copy and paste the texture from the diffuse into the height. So right click copy, and right click paste. And you'll see it instantly works. Now I'm just going to explain why real quick. So basically, the height is a single value between 0 and 1. Hence why you can see at the bottom, it's got this weird red, green, blue, and alpha um, little selection box here. So this changes what channel it will take from the layers. In this case, because our texture has the alpha channel, we can tell it to use this alpha channel as the height. So this way, you can see that it's got the black parts being all the way in, while the white parts are on the surface. Alright, well that's looking cool. However, we can take it a bit further. What we can do is we can go into our settings panel. We're going to add a bit of shine to it. Now, there are a couple of different ways to do this in Shader Sandwich, the easiest being just turning on specular highlights or shine. However, there is a better, more effective, and better looking way to do this. Cycle through the different diffuse types until you hit Physically Based Rendering Standard. This is a new lighting mode that came with Unity 5, and you can use it pretty easily within Shader Sandwich. It creates these really nice reflections and higher quality specular highlights than you would if you just turned this on. And you'll see it does turn it on automatically because it shares some of the same settings. So now what we can do is we can adjust the size to make it either sort of more shiny, or we can make it look really, really blurry. For this effect, I'd suggest 0 0.5. Now, this may look a little bit shiny at first, however, we'll be adding a bit more detail in later, which will make it blur. So, for now, let's just go back into our layers. Now, you'll see this new reflection does make it look kind of flat, because the thing is, the reflection doesn't actually know about these individual cracks. But, we can tell it about them. So, what we're going to do is we're going to go into this area here, the normals area. The normals are used to add fake bumps, as it said right there. The idea is that this texture... Basically, um, it has fake bumps placed within it. 
The idea is that this sort of blue color is pointing directly up, whereas when you have different colors, it angles the surface in different ways, or at least makes the lights think the surface is angled in different ways. This lets you create fake bumps, and this is really handy for us because we've got all these bumps that aren't being shown, but we can fake them. So what we're going to do is we're going to right click on the diffuse layer again and hit copy, and then right click on the normals layer and hit paste. Now, this isn't quite the effect we want at the moment, because this isn't a normal map, this is just a standard texture. But we can convert it to a normal map really easily. Click the plus button on the effects area, click conversion, and then normal map. And instantly you'll see a difference. So you can see it's got these sort of weird bumps now. This isn't quite what we want, so let's have a look at some of these settings. We've got the size and the height. The height affects sort of how deep the cracks are. So if we lower the height, you'll see that it lowers the actual effect it has. In this case, I'm going to go with 1.3. I'm going to increase it slightly. However, this still doesn't look right, because it looks like the actual bumping is happening slightly offset from the actual bump. This is due to the size. The lower the size, the smaller the cracks are. So I'm going to set this to 0 0.01. Oh, not 1, 0 0.01. There we go. And there we go. So you can see that adds this really nice looking depth to it, which looks much better. Alright then, we're done. So that's the end of the part 3 of the beginner tutorials. So hopefully you've learnt a lot, and now you've got this really cool shader. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, you're well on your way to becoming a shader sandwich master. Well, thanks for watching. And yeah, hopefully you've learned enough. So if you have any further questions or want to leave a comment, just leave a comment below and I'll be sure to answer it pretty quickly. Well, thanks for watching. Now, before I say bye, I'm actually going to do a bit of an extension here. Because I've had some people request some different sort of variations of the shader. So I'm going to go through them here. The first one is just a very simple addition. The idea is to make the diffuse channel black. So just add a new layer in the diffuse channel and set the color to be black. So you can see that this creates a very sleek looking lava shader. It doesn't quite look like ash or cracks anymore, but you could use this for like, I don't know, a crazy looking robot maybe, more of a metallic thing, with this lava flowing underneath, things like that. It's pretty versatile, so mess it around with it a bit. And the other variation that someone requested was the ability to have the actual ash itself move across as well. This is pretty simple. All we have to do is grab this uh, mapping offset effect and apply it to every other layer. So we can do this. Just go into Diffuse, Mapping Offset, and then you can set the input to be the same input as over there by clicking on this drop down and setting it to X offset within Float Emission. So you'll see now that is moving across, however, nothing else is. So you just gotta add the same effect to every single layer. And there you go. So as you can see, now it looks like it scrolls across. It might be moving a little fast, so feel free to experiment with the speed within the inputs panel. Alright, well, thanks for watching. Hopefully you've learned a lot, and uh, yeah, hopefully those variations are useful. Definitely feel free to experiment. There's so many different directions you could take these shaders in. So uh, yeah, feel free to go back to our previous uh, shader tutorials and experiment more of those as well. Well, more tutorials will be coming in the future for more advanced things, but for now, this is the end of beginner tutorials. Alright, well thanks for watching. See you guys later.